three cheers, no, four cheers, no, five cheers for Pride. One of the best films around and gay and lesbian. At last, we had a film that went outside the independent film festival fair. We had a film that had something for everyone and everyone felt something about this film. It had a story that engrossed, a script that was witty, a historical sense that was accurate, and characters that we really cared about, including characters who were gay, and including characters who weren't gay, and including some characters who weren't gay at the beginning, but were by the end. So, shouldn't we rejoice at last cinema as accepting gay lives, lesbian lives? Well, sort of, because one of these characters, who was one of the heroes of the film, didn't actually make it long beyond the end of the film because, as in real life, he died of AIDS at the age of 26, as the film tells us at the very end. There were, of course, other characters who did live, but it got me thinking about the number of gay characters in English-speaking films who die. You may know this book, it's a classic. It's called The Celluloid Closet, and that was by Vito Russo. He wrote it in 1981, revised it in 1987. And one of its excellent features is a necrology, which lists all the gay characters who met sticky or premature ends in movies made between 1919 and 1986. Now, you might think that we're in 2014, 2015, that that's all over with. We're all so liberated now that we have gay stories where the characters live after the film has ended. Unfortunately, that's not true because I have compiled my own necrology of films, English speaking films, made between 1997 and 2014. And there are a lot of dead bodies by the time these films end. Ian McKellen. He was James Whale in Gods and Monsters. He ends up face down in a swimming pool. We have uh, Javier Bardem, who was the villain in Skyfall, apparently a bisexual villain. Well, of course, as we know, all James Bond villains end up dead, and he was no exception. Tom Wilkinson, the best exotic Marigold Hotel. Remember that character? He'd come to India to meet up with his childhood friend and unrequited lover. He meets the lover and then promptly dies of a heart attack. So he will not be making an appearance in the second best exotic Marigold Hotel. Colin Firth, he was the star of A Single Man. What happened to him at the end of the film? Heart attack. He played another gay character in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. He was shot point blank range by his lover. So, two gay performances by Colin, two deaths. He did survive in Mamma Mia, that was an exception. Then we have Sean Penn. He played Harvey Milk, who we know, along with the mayor of San Francisco, was assassinated. He won an Oscar for that. Another gay tragedy. Michael Douglas, behind the candelabra. He played Liberace. How did Liberace end up in the film? didn't look good, did he? And he didn't last because he died of AIDS. Jake Gyllenhaal broke Back Mountain. Remember what a big breakthrough movie that was? That was a big Ang Lee movie about two gay men. Jake didn't make it to the end, did he? And we come right to today, Benedict Cumberbatch in The Imitation Game. Poor Alan Turing. Suicide? Was it accidental or was it something else? No matter, he's another gay victim. Of course, you could say, well, there are lots of gay characters who do survive. Stephen Fry and Oscar Wilde didn't live long after his two year prison sentence, though, did he? How about Dumbledore in the Harry Potter? Harry Potter films, he survived, didn't he? But then he was only outed as gay by J.K. Rowling years after those books had appeared, and he was never depicted as gay in the Harry Potter films. Good news, Tom Hardy is playing two gay characters in a film that's coming very soon. He plays both Cray brothers, both Cray twins. They didn't die mm, 
two Grizzlier deaths, but they did actually die eventually in prison, having killed quite a few people. Role models? Perhaps not. And so we say farewell, let's look at the Hunger Games, Mockingjay, the third part of Hunger Games. There is a sort of gay character in the Hunger Games, but we're told by another character that they died. But sweetly, this character has left behind a design for Jennifer Lawrence's Mockingjay costume. Gays are so useful, but often so dead. So pride, a film, is a source of pride. It'll be made into a musical any time now, and it's going to be a worldwide hit. No doubt about it. Very, very positive message. However, we shouldn't forget that Pride is an exception. A very unusual film. It doesn't have American money in it, so it doesn't have to appeal to any Puritan sensibility out there. It purely meets the demands of a domestic audience, and if other countries like it, that's just extra gravy, isn't it? But let's look at the actual numbers. Let's play the numbers game. I go back to Vito's book, The Celluloid Closet. Between 1919 and 1986, that's 66 years, there were 40 deaths in English-speaking films. That's advised and consent to walk on the wild side. So we've got 40 deaths of gay characters. The last 20 years, we've got 23 films and 12 deaths. And when I say 23 films, these are major mainstream films. These are not your minority gay film festival films. And they are purely gay male characters, not lesbians. So Vito was actually looking at lesbian characters as well as gays in his 40 deaths. I've just looked at male gay characters. We've lost 13 of the main gay characters in films made in the last 20 years. Certainly something to think about. Have we actually moved out of the cellular closet? And is it perhaps that as a minority group we have become too successful in the world so that in a way we're being punished cinematically for being too out there 